Okay, so if quarantine for you looks like working through that editing backlog, cutting a lot of talking heads, cutting a lot of interview footage, and that's what mine looks like right now. And I wanted to give you a couple of quick tips for editing interviews. So my first tip in my process is versioning timelines. What I call versioning is you're creating different versions of the timeline for different steps in the editing process so that you can always go back to where you were before and you don't lose any work as you cut further and further into an interview. So step one is, is syncing, and that's kind of where my first version starts, is with the synced timeline. Just two cameras, one take for each camera, but when it gets really complicated, say there are three or four cameras, a couple of different takes, you always wanna be able to come back to that sync timeline. If you lose an audio track along the way, or you need to pull a section of that interview that didn't make it further along into the process. So I don't touch the interview sync, that's kind of the master, the backup. I go ahead right away, I duplicate it, and this one I'll call interview selects. Interview selects are my first passive editing. I'll be listening through everything, and then as I go, when I hear something that I like, I use the blade tool to cut an in and an out, and then I label those clips that I like in Mango. That's just something I've picked up. Um, I'm kind of a Mango kind of guy when it comes to good clips. And so once I've gone through and done that for an interview, this is again, just a demo. <laughs> We're keeping it pretty simple here. Once I've gone through and done that, then what I'll do is I'll duplicate the sequence again, and this one we'll just call interview. So we'll just call this cut number one. And so what I do is I select the label group. So I select all my Mango clips, I copy them, put them on the end of the timeline. Then I delete the rest of the clips that I didn't select. And then I can start cutting and moving around all these clips that are in Mango. And so these are the three versions of an interview that I keep around through the editing process. And now see if I get into cutting this interview down even further, but then I say, hey, I wanna go back and pull another clip. Then I can either go back to the interview selects or I can go back to the original sync timeline and I can pull further clips and I don't have to pull the clips back in, sync them up again and do any of that because that's just more work that I don't wanna be doing if I have to come back to this later. So tip number two for you is layering your timelines. Layering your A camera and your B camera on top of each other and then enabling or disabling the clip that you wanna use. So see what I have there? So I've got on top of this timeline, I've got the wide shot and then I have the tight shot underneath. So say in this clip, I'm playing through it. And I'm like, oh, okay, so I wanna cut in from there to the tight shot. I'll do a blade and cut into the, the tight shot there, but I leave the wide shot intact on top of it. Now, this is a mistake that sometimes people who I work with when I'm editing make. They just try to flatten the interview down and they only give you, uh, okay, so there's the wide shot and then we're gonna cut over here and we're gonna cut into the tight shot. But what if I make some changes down the line and say, oh no, I can't cut to the tight shot here. I need to stay on. And I say, oh, I need to cut to the tight shot earlier. Well, then I got to drag it up and move it back and do all these and do all these different things. And sometimes you'll lose the shot, um, especially when you get really deep into a complicated interview edit. So I like to keep the edit as non-destructive as possible. And in this, it's very simple for me to switch between the two shots. And then if I were to pass this off to somebody else, then they could very easily see where I'm making the cuts. And if they don't like the cut, you know, you can just change it right back. So that's what I call layering timelines. Now, let's say you get an interview with only one camera shot. Maybe it's in 4K, maybe it's in 1080. Regardless of that, you've only got one camera shot, but you want to make multiples out of it. So what I'll do is I'll take the single camera shot here. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it up onto the next track. And then from here, I'll make my punched in second camera. So, you, so there you go, you're, you're wide and you're tight. Um, and then you can apply that to all of the clips. There you go, that's kind of making a two camera shot out of a one camera shot. Again, using layered timelines to do that so that that just saves me time from having to adjust the scale and the position of individual clips that I wanna turn into a tight shot from the wide shot. Now I really have a two camera interview, even though I've only got one angle. And my final tip for you is crossfades. 
when you're cutting in between different interview clips, sometimes you hear a little pop, especially if you're trying to trim off one word a little short, or you want to get past somebody's okay or somebody's so or and at the beginning of their sentence and just get right into the sentence, you might get a little pop in between clips. Easiest way to get rid of that is a tiny little crossfade. So I'm gonna zoom in on this transition here and I have it set up as a shortcut, which I'll show you how to do real quick here. So you're gonna go up here into your preferences, into your timeline, and so see here, I've got my default audio transition across dissolve set to four frames. So that's two frames in, two frames out, and that just fades nicely in between two audio clips, helps get rid of little pops or little differences in the audio really is an easy thing. Once you set it up to the shortcut, you can just apply it to your whole timeline at once. You just highlight all the audio, you hit shift D, add those little cross dissolves to all of your audio clips, and that just kind of smooths everything out. It's not gonna be the magic bullet for every single situation, but for most interviews, that's gonna do the trick makes everything super smooth, super clean. So that's it. Those are some quick tips on editing interviews. I will say if you're editing as part of a team, whether you're the assistant editor or you're the lead editor, setting up your timelines like this is gonna make you an all-star player. And if you have to go back and edit a project, say a couple weeks, a couple months, maybe a year down the line, it's really nice to come back to a project have everything laid out so you can kind of walk yourself back through your thought process. And if you have to pull new clips and add them to an edit, you have a really logical, systematized way of going back and seeing how you cut things and making changes to that moving forward. All right, I gotta get back to my editing backlog. See ya. All right, Drew, do your magic.